What is up, ladies and gentlemen? It's Ryan here, and today is a great day because I just launched my hobby project. This is live and it's public. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out. And yeah, I'm really stoked about this. So this is actually part three in the series following my progress as I develop this project. If you want to check out the other videos, I'll leave a link in the description below. So this is where I've landed so far. So what we can do here is type in some text and all of these thumbnails are going to instantly update to match that text. We can also go here and select a font and all of the text will update to match that font. Or we can just click here to randomize it if you don't know exactly which one you want. And we could also adjust the font size if you want to make it larger or smaller. Clicking this button down here will reset all the settings. And one of my favorite parts is we can drag an image here. And now all of the background images will change to that background. I'd say most of the time you probably want a custom background to match your video. And so you'll be able to do that. So needless to say, I'm really stoked about how this is turning out. Uh, it's pretty fun to play around with. So let's talk about some code now. So the file blob service actually conforms to this interface, which has some really basic methods, just put, get, and delete. So the nice thing about using an interface here is that it serves as an abstraction for managing data. I don't care where the data is gonna go, maybe Amazon S3, Google Cloud, maybe in memory or on disk. It doesn't even matter because we're using an interface here. So aside from that, another update I made was adding a profiler here. So I was running into some big performance issues where it would take over two seconds to render an image and it was just unbearably slow. So in the end, I ended up creating my own profiler object where I start it. I give it a label so I know what exactly I'm monitoring. And then at the very end, it stops so I can get the duration of that operation. And I added this code to all of the image operations so that I could see which one was performing the slowest. And so I have this endpoint here where it captures the maximum, minimum, and average durations for each operation. You can see add gradient, add text, load file, resize image. So resizing the image was taking a really long time. It was taking like over two seconds to just to resize. So I ended up fixing that and bringing it down from two seconds to about 500 milliseconds. So let's talk about architecture. So far I have three instances of the thumbnail service and two instances of API. I also have a Redis and blob service. So this is how it actually looks when everything's wired up. The user talks to the public facing load balancer, Kubernetes which routes the traffic between the two API replicas. Now the API then talks to the thumbnail service. It doesn't necessarily care which one it's talking to because all of them are just replicas of the same service. So the reason I have two API instances is because I just want it to be ready to scale it up. Because what happens is if you only have one in the beginning, you're gonna write a bunch of code, deploy stuff, everything is going great. And then once you wanna scale it up to multiple instances, you're gonna realize, whoops, I have some stateful logic that needs to be changed. For example, I have a rate limiter in here. And at first the rate limiter was using memory storage. But if each instance of API is managing its own memory storage, then you're gonna end up with two sets of data representing the same thing. And when you have multiple replicas of these microservices in a distributed architecture, you generally wanna have one source of truth for your data. And the same thing applies to the blob service. So with the files that are uploaded and as well as the template assets that I add myself, I didn't want the thumbnail service or the API or anything to have to directly manage that data. Once again, with that data, there should be one source of truth. And so the single blob service handles all of that. So feel free to log on to thumbgen.io and check it out for yourself. I'm curious to see what feedback you guys might have. I'm totally open to suggestions. So please like and subscribe and support a little YouTuber like myself and thank you for watching.